What do you call a cow with three legs? Lean beef, lean beef. No legs, ground beef. Never mind. Uh, sorry, sorry. My wife doesn't like the dad jokes. Uh, she hears them all the time. Um, so, yeah, so uh, we, we grew that. And then during the pandemic, you realize that, like, for us, we weren't able to meet for, like, almost two years. We couldn't meet by government, you know. They wouldn't even let us meet together. Uh, and so uh, I realized that, you know, the, the, the come model didn't work. So we said, okay, if we can't come, we're going to go. And so we began to start house churches. The joke is my assistant, uh, I fired my assistant. That's the joke because my assistant uh, went to some of the, the, the training that we did and she started seven house churches. She was only a believer for a couple of years. She came from a, a, another faith. That's, I have to say that because you're live streaming. So it's from another faith she came and she started doing these house churches and she started leading all these people to Jesus. So I fired her and I said, I'm just going to hire you to do that. And just, just recently she was up in a place where there was a, 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 a priest of another faith uh, and her, his, she led the son to Jesus, and the priest grabbed the, the Bible, tore it up, threw it at his son, and kicked his son out of the house. And his son said, don't worry, Dad, God will show you. And then a little while later, the, 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 the father got sick, and it just so happened that the son was home. So the son, while he was home, the father was sick. He said, can I pray for you? In Jesus' name. And he said, sure. And so he prayed for him. Uh, the man got healed, and now all of the priest's followers are following Jesus. So we're having, we're having a blast. So, you know, since the pandemic, we've started 30 house churches up in all the villages up in the north. It's so much fun. I'm like a kid in a candy store. I love seeing people come to Jesus. There's nothing better than seeing people come to Jesus. It's the best thing in the world. So I could, all right, I'll just stay quiet. I'll stay quiet. And, and so then, and then, so then, uh, we, we, we started a second campus in our city because there's this area that has all these digital nomads from all around the world, and it's kind of a landlock that you can't get out of there. It's, 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 it's just a very bottlenecked area. So we just started that like this past uh, February. It has now swelled to 320 people, all kinds of people, all crazy digital nomads. I don't know about you, but I want crazy people in my church. I want people who don't know Jesus in my church. I want tons of them. I want as many, like I always say, you know, like, so here we are. We have a room that only fits because we couldn't find a big, a big place. The, the room only fits 140 people. And we, we had 320 there yesterday. I mean, they're sitting on top of each other. I am experiencing the Jesus revelation. You know, the revolution, that movie? I'm experiencing it right now. It's so much fun. The girl, the lady sitting next to Carol, this girl, Chelsea, she, she's from Boston, actually. And uh, she, she, she's like, she, we're going at it. She's worshiping like crazy, right? And she didn't even know I'm the pastor. I get up and I, I share the word. I come sit down. And then, and then she, uh, oh, I forgot to tell the, I'm going to be hanging out down here most of the time, wherever your camera guy is. Uh, yeah. So, um, and, and uh, I, I just can't stand still. Uh, so anyways, she, she comes and sits down after, after I speak. She comes over to us and she goes, she goes, do you know I channel Jesus? She's like a new ager, man. She does, you guys probably don't even know some of this stuff. Kundalini and Reiki, man. It is like, they talk to snakes and stuff. It's like crazy. So like, she says, she goes, I don't know anything about the Bible, but I channel Jesus. Can I go, can I go to your Bible study? Sure you can. Absolutely you can. And you know what? I have experienced the power of God. See, God is way more powerful than we can imagine. We, we, we can, our eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor has entered in the heart of man the things that God can do. Can I get an amen? I mean, he's so powerful, and we underestimate his power. So, like, she's doing, when I say she's doing kundalini, she has, like, like, like that's how she makes her money. So she, she has, like, 20, 30 people in her classes, and she's teaching them to talk to snakes. I don't know if you know what kundalini is, but they actually speak in tongues, a different kind. But it looks a lot the same. The devil, he's created nothing. Can I get an amen? He's created, he just imitates, he just steals. So anyways, so we tell her, you know what, Chelsea, just, you know what, just invite Jesus into your, into your, your stuff. Just invite Jesus in. She comes back, she goes, unbelievable. She goes, it's amazing. It's, it's 
so much better. When Jesus was there, it was so much better than the stuff I was doing. It's amazing. I'm seeing people get healed. I'm seeing people get delivered, you know. And then, so, and, and like, so we had a long conversation with her, kept talking to her. Kept, finally, like, I get a text message, you know, about a month ago, and she said, I want out of all darkness. I want out of all darkness. You know, this, this, this other girl, her name is... Uh, her name is Kasha. She's another one. She's another New Ager kind of person. She's from Poland. And she, she comes and, 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 and we, we lead her to Jesus. You know, so, so we lead her to Jesus. She comes to Jesus and she's going to get baptized. This has only happened, what, a couple of months ago. And, and she's going to get baptized. So this was like Sunday. We're going to baptism next Sunday. And uh, so she texts us uh, uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday. She says, hey, I just want you to know that my girlfriend, you know, like her girlfriend, girlfriend, I didn't know she had a girlfriend. Uh, my girlfriend just had an experience with Jesus. She wants to get baptized too. Okay, that's going to be interesting. Let's see what happens. Let's just, so we just, so the next Sunday, both of them meet with Carol and I. We're sitting there talking and, we're, and I'm listening to this, her girlfriend story about how God has come to her. And, I mean, it was a definite salvation. I'm like, whoa, I'm still saying, what am I going to do? You know, I don't know. And then finally I looked at them. I said, why do you guys look sad? She goes, Oh, because today we're breaking up, man. We're going all the way with Jesus. We, we don't want to play around. We don't want to play around. We underestimate the power of God. We underestimate him. He is a powerful God. You know, we don't have to say something. Some things God will do. We tell, those, we tell these people from other faiths, we, we'll say, you know, they, they have a lot of gods on the shelves. We say, just put Jesus up there. Watch what he'll do. He pushes them all off. It's true. He's an amazing God. So, so we started that, so that we got that campus going. So now God is just moving. And so that's what's happening in Indonesia. I feel like a kid in a candy store. I'm so much, I'm having so much fun. I'm so excited for what God is doing. And so I want to personally, Carol and I want to personally thank you guys because you guys have been with us. Uh, you, see, you're the, the pastor that helped build this uh, building, Steve Anton, I don't know if you know him, but like he was our first original. He, he, he married us. He baptized us. You know, he, he, he led me to Jesus. Well, actually, I baptized in the spirit through him and all that stuff. Anyways, he was our original pastor. So we have a real connection here. Uh, and so we're really, we're really, really thankful that you guys have supported us. And I just want you to know your money has gone to, you know, you're going to have somebody. I, I know I've done this before, but I'll do it anyways. I had too much fun with it, right? You know, like, what's your name, sir? Steven. Oh, Steve. How you doing, Steve? You know how many Steves we have in Indonesia? We, we have nicknames for all of them. We have like Steven Wing, Steven Shrimps, Dr. Steve. We have all these Steves. Seriously. You know, like, like, so don't you want someone to come up to heaven? Like when you're in heaven, they want to come up and say, hey, Steve, thanks so much. This is a really amazing place. Thank you that you introduced me to Jesus. It's a really cool place. Don't you want them to do that? They're not going to do that. They're going to go, thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. That's my favorite thing to do. But think that's, don't you want to lead someone to Jesus? I'm telling you, there's nothing better. Nothing better. Uh, so anyways, I'll calm down now. I think I've covered everything we do. Oh, and so those, some have asked, you know, how, how, do we, how do we follow you? They're not Facebook people there. They're Instagram people. So we have two Instagram accounts. One is New Tribe Bali, if you like to follow, New Tribe Bali. And the other one is, uh, I always say Entebe, uh, N-T-B dot Changu. Oh, boy. C-A-N-G-G-U. C-A-G-G-N. Uh, uh, they just see me afterwards, and you'll get, but but it's so much fun. Yes, sir. New tribe Bali. See all the young people. If you don't know what to do, guys, just ask your sons and daughters. They'll tell you what to do. But we're we're just seeing. I mean, and this the the, the campus that we just started. We're talking like twenty year olds to thirty five year old, all single no digital nomads from all around the world. It's it's just it's amazing. Like we and I and I see that. This uh, group is a bit eclectic, which is great. Uh, we, we just, there's just people from every part of the world. I think every continent uh, is represented in, in, the, in, our, in our community that we have in Denpasar. So it's so much fun. I'm having so much uh, excitement being there. And so we're, we're never leaving. We're never coming home. Uh, we'll stay there forever. I'm serious about that. So today, obviously, 
I want to talk about what the, the father longs to restore. That's the father's heart. The father's heart is to restore. You know that, right? It's like that's his number one thing. You know, if you're, you could check this theology out later. Yeah, I, I believe it's there. But like if your thought is, I can't wait to die and go to heaven and like leave this world, you're missing it. Because what does it say in Revelation chapter 22? God's desiring to bring heaven down to earth. He wants to bring heaven here. So guess what? When you die, you're going to wake up here. The father is heartbroken about what he sees in this world. He's heartbroken and he wants to restore Door. He doesn't want to uh, abandon. He doesn't want to kick it out. He doesn't want to destroy it. He's going to change. He's going to, he's going to restore it all. Back to the Garden of Eden. Woo. We're going to have wonderful relationships with each other. No more tears. No more sun. We're going to have a wonderful, and we're going to sing, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God. Salvation belongs to him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. That's what we're going to be singing and sharing, and, and we're going to be, you know, man, that's why some, you know, do you know how old I am, man? Guess how old I am. Yeah, you'll never guess, but you can try. 60. Well, that's pretty close, but I'm actually only... 40 years old. I'm 40 years into eternity. I got a long way to go, baby. I'm going to live forever. I got eternity when I was 20. You got it right. But I'm, that's how young we're going to live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And God wants everyone. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to eternal life. And he doesn't, he, he could do it without us, but he wants to use us. He wants to use you. He longs to restore. So uh, uh, that's, a, that's all freebie. I haven't even started yet. I'll get there. What do we got, like three hours or so? All right. And if you guys are worried about the Patriots game, you're not going to see anything anyways. Never mind. Woo! Trouble. Okay. We're out of Luke 15. Out of Luke 15. We're actually going to talk about the whole chapter, but obviously I can't read the whole chapter. I'm going to just read the first three verses. It says, now the tax collectors and sinners were gathered around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. And then Jesus told them this parable. Actually, Jesus didn't tell them this parable. In the chapter 15, he actually tells them three parables. Now, if you've done any study, I'm assuming you have some knowledge, but, you know, there's three, he tells them three parables. He tells them the parable of the, the, the lost sheep, the 99, you know, one, one is lost. And so the, the shepherd leaves the 99 and goes after the one. And then when he finds him and he brings it back and he rejoices. Then the second parable is about the woman who lost the coin. She loses a coin. It says, when she loses the coin, doesn't she light the house and sweep the whole house and look for the coin that's lost? And when she finds the coin that's lost, she rejoices. And then the third parable is what some would call the prodigal son. Uh, it's really the lost son. If we're going to go lost, 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 it's really the lost son. And so the lost son basically, you know, goes to the father and wants his inheritance, basically says to the father, I wish you were dead. I want my inheritance. The father gives him the inheritance. He goes, he wastes it all, right? And then what does he say? He finally realizes, hey, I need to go back. He turns around, he comes back home, and the father sees him from afar off, and he runs, and he puts a robe and a ring on him, and he says, come on, let's celebrate, because my son who was lost is now found. So the response of those, those, three, those three parables are a response to what the teachers and the Pharisees were thinking. And what, is it, what, is, what does he say? He says, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So, so what we have is we have a view of how the Pharisees and the teachers looked at sinners. And then we have how the Father or how Jesus looks at sinners. So this is the contrast that we have. So this is the context of this uh, chapter, uh, these things. Now, who were the Pharisees? Who were they at that time? At that time, they were the religious 
leaders, right? They were the religious leaders. And basically, they were the ones who told people how to be, acceptab- to be acceptable to God. How to, they, they held, let's say it this way, they held the keys to the kingdom. And they were telling people how to get in. Amen? That was what's going on. So who holds the keys today? Okay, good question, good answer. You know, there was a Sunday school teacher, and she was saying to the kids in the Sunday school, she was saying, hey, uh, what is white, you know, and hops around a lot? And none of the kids answered. And she was, you know, got a bushy tail and big long ears, you know, they hop around. No kid answers. Finally, come on. Finally, the kid raises his hand. He goes, I know the answer is always Jesus, but it sure sounds like a bunny. Who holds the keys to the kingdom? We do. We do. We are the, aren't we the ones who tell people how to get to heaven? Aren't we the ones who are the instructors uh, helping people? No one else has it, right? We don't believe. I don't believe anyone. I believe the only way. There's only one way, Jesus. And since we're Jesus followers, we are the ones, right? Right? So the Pharisees, when they're, I love you, bro. I lost track. No, no. <laughs> I don't usually get greeted so nicely. But the, 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 so, so, so we are the holders to the keys of the kingdom. So the Pharisees are looking at the, at the, at the, at the, at the sinners. And what do they think? They're like, you know, they're no good. They're, they, we need to stay away from them. You know, if we touch them, we're going to be unclean. That's how they thought, right? Because religious people... Why don't you throw that up on the screen? Religious people focus on themselves. Religious people focus on themselves. They're worried about being made unclean. They're worried about what sinners might do to them. And, and so as, as holders to the keys of the kingdom, so, you know, sometimes, I mean, I've heard this before, you know, like, so, so let's say you don't know Jesus and I know Jesus, you know, and, and how dare you, how dare you use the Lord's name in vain in my presence? You can't do that. That's a wrong thing to do, says the holder of the keys to the kingdom. You think that's going to bring him closer? Do you think that's going to get him close? I can't stand the way the world lives. And, you know, they got to get their act together. And I just, says the holders to the keys of the kingdom. We've got to stop that, people. We've got to stop that. But see, in here, we see the contrast of how the Father how the Father looks at it. Because Jesus is focused on how to restore not how they are living. How to restore them. Not on how they should live. He's the one who's sitting around. He's sitting with prostitutes. He's sitting with those uh, who don't know him. He's hanging out with them. He's eating with them. He's spending time with them. We're the Pharisees like, Stay away. Don't come near them. Stay away from them because they, you know, come out from among them and touch no unclean thing. And I will be your God. And you, you, that is not what that scripture is talking about. If we have the heart of the Father, our heart should look to restore. It should always be looking to restore. Our heart, well, uh, uh, let's just keep going somewhere sometime so let's look at the first parable it says that there's 99 there was 100 sheep right and the 99 and what does the shepherd do the shepherd hangs out with the 99 sheep <clears throat> wrong answer shepherd sometimes I think I wonder sometimes if Jesus is actually here or if he's not out in the city because you guys are fine you realize after you come to Jesus you're fine you're all set you don't have to worry about a thing you got heaven it's all ready for you 
He's got it all restored for you. He's all waiting. He's just waiting to come get you. You are fine. But the question is in this parable. So you got the 99 sheep, you got the shepherd, and you got the one lost. The question is, which one of those characters are you? Now, I will tell you, if you're here and you're feeling lost, this parable and the next parable and the next parable after that, let me tell you, if you're lost, God is coming for you, man. He's coming after you. He's not worried about anything else. He's, his eyes are on you. His eyes are coming. His eyes are calling, you know, for the lost sheep. Maybe his name is Charlie. He's going, Charlie, I'm, where are you? I want to find you. He's coming after them. He's going after them. The shepherd leaves the 99 and he goes after the one. So if you're lost, I can tell you right now, Jesus is coming after you. If you have a, a son or a daughter, you keep praying that God's coming after them. He's coming for them. Hallelujah. But so are you the, are you the shepherd? Are you the lost sheep, the shepherd? Are you out there? Or are you the 99? You know, the 99, man, you know where they are, right? They're hanging out in green pastures. Oh, they're eating. Oh, I love Freedom Hill. Oh, it's so good. It's beautiful. I love coming to international dinners. I love coming to the Bible studies. I love, I'm not worried about, you know, Charlie who, who got hurt by the church and left. I'm not worried about him. I'm happy because I'm eating green pastures. Think about it. You guys live, how many, how many people live in Boston? You got a, you got a harvest field. The, the fields are white for harvest. Don't, don't tell me that it's hard and people don't come to Jesus here. That's, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Why do you think people chase after alcohol, after drugs, after relationships, trying to be, why? Because they're hungry. They're hungry. The question is, will Freedom Hill say, you know what? I want to be like the shepherd. I want to be like the shepherd. I remember Charlie. I remember when Charlie got hurt and he's no longer here. And, and I want to give him a call and I want to love him. This one guy, his name is Mike Harris. <laughs> oh, names. Um, anyways, great guy. I love, I love Mike. Eight years I've been meeting with Mike, maybe more. But for eight years I meet with this guy. You know, one time he told me, God's still learning. Oh, yeah, There's a different God than mine, but you know. But now he calls me and talks to me about spiritual things. First time ever, only about maybe six months ago, was the first time he ever stepped foot in one of our gatherings. And I know he made his way up here to say hi to me to make sure I saw him. He's hungry. Eight years I spent time with him. Eight years. Now I rejoice. You know, we were, we were with some of our friends the other day, just, just uh, what, Friday night or Thursday night, Thursday night. And like, you know... The guy says to me, the guy says to me, he goes, he goes, Donald, when you were home, I was home a while back, and he goes, when you started spending time with me, you started drawing me closer. I was getting closer. He goes, then since you left, I kind of forgot. We were sitting in a bar with them, talking to them. Are you a shepherd? Are you the 99? Are you the one? Who are you? Then we got the next parable, right? We got the next parable. This woman, she lost a coin. Now, um, you know, she sifts through the dirt. <clears throat> the kingdom of God is like a merchant searching for a pearl. And when he finds it, right? There's two parables there. He says, the kingdom of God is like a treasure that the man finds in a field. And he goes away and he buys, he sells everything he has. <laughs> he sells everything he has to buy not the treasure. He didn't buy the treasure, by the way. He bought the field. Now, how much dirt 
compared to how much treasure did he buy? Bought a whole lot of dirt, didn't he? Whole lot of dirt right here. But God saw a treasure and he gave his life for me. He bought all of me, dirt and all. He bought it all. He didn't worry about the dirt. He wanted the treasure. And he restored this broken treasure into something wonderful. When you see someone, do you see dirt? Or do you see a marred image of God that's a treasure? That's worth selling everything you have. To see that person restored. That's the heart of the father. This woman lights a lamp and she's getting dirty. Just like the guy looking for the treasure in the field. He was probably dirty. I'm afraid to get dirty. You're already dirty. God cleaned you up. God cleaned you, man. You're only clean from one reason, one reason only, the blood, baby. I might stumble and fall. You might restore too. You're not going to find too many, and I'm just using the term it says in 15, Luke 15, you're not going to find too many lost coins here. You'll find them out there though. Find a whole lot, but you got to dig for them. You got to sweep the floor. You got to keep searching. You got to keep searching. Then the parable of the son. Here's the son. Right? What's the father doing? He, I, I guarantee you, it says that he was sitting on the porch, you know, and he saw his, his son coming off and he just guts up and he begins to run. Um, a couple of things here. One, I guarantee you when he was on that porch, the dude's praying. I want my son home. Want him back. How often do you pray for the lost in your prayers? God, I need a car. God, I need a house. God, I need to pay the bills. God, I need to... I, 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 I. You have everything you need for life and godliness. It says it in First Peter. You got it. What are you worried about? You don't need anything. You have everything you need. God, I want to see, I want to start knocking. God, I want to see souls saved. God, I want to see my neighbor saved. God, I want to see Indonesian saved. God, I want to see other, I want to see the world saved. God, I want, God, I want, God, here I am, send me. That's what will happen. That's what will happen. You know, uh, sorry I'm loud. Luke 15, 20. So he returned, so the son returned home, and while he was still a long way off, the father saw him coming filled with filled with condemnation and 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 anger. He ran to his son and he pointed his finger at his son and he said, Can't can't believe you wasted all my money. Of course not. Not even a thought in his mind. Not a thought in his mind about the money, about what he's done. See, he's looking at his son, and he's seeing his son in a whole different way. Are we seeing those who are lost in the same way he's looking at his son? Not worried about what they did. Not worrying about making sure they go through some accountability. He just wants them home. He just wants to celebrate with him. I don't. Three more things and then I'll be quiet. And you know, it's really nice because you're right, 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 right here. So I can't even see the clock. So I can go as long as I want. Let's go all the way back to the top. Let's go all the way back to the top for a second. Just for a second. When he looks at the lost sheep, the only thing he wants to do is bringing people back into the family, into the fold. It's, it's all about bringing people into the fold. It's all about having people come in and be part of, of the fold. You know, 
I was, I was, I was, I was so here we are in, 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 in Changu and in this new campus and, you know, the people are sitting on the floor and standing in the back and, you know, and we're in the second song, you know, we're in the second. I always, I, I, play, I play this game. I love this game. I say, you play pastor, you know, what would you do? So second song in, all of a sudden this girl comes walking in wearing basically a bikini. It sits in the front row. What do you do? I asked somebody one time, they said, I would go up and I'd give them a little robe to cover them. Like, so you basically say goodbye to them. Would you ever come back if someone did that to you? Actually, I was, I was, I was kind of like impressed that she had the guts to walk in like that. Come to find out she was an Indonesian playboy model searching for God. That week she got delivered. She got saved. She, next week she didn't come wearing that. Just let God. We want people here in the fold with warts and all. And if you think you don't have warts, it's only because you have what the Indonesians call ja'im. Ja'im is, is, is uh, two words that mix together. Ja meaning manjaga. It means to watch over. And the next word, im, means image, to watch over your image. You're just whitewashed sepulchers because underneath, come on. How clean do you think we are? Except for the blood. You know, we expect, we come, oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. your pastor isn't here, but he's probably watching. I love you. Uh, you know, people come, they start coming, you know, they, they want to come to Jesus. And, and what we do is we, we, it's like a pizza. And we say, you must eat this whole pizza or you can't come to Jesus. Like, like you got to buy the whole thing. I, when I came to Jesus, I didn't buy the whole thing. I didn't eat the whole thing. I didn't know the whole thing. I still was all messed up. I was a long-haired hippie freak, you know? And I didn't know that you couldn't do this or you shouldn't do that or that's not a good thing to do. I didn't know that that was death. I didn't know that that would bring, you know, problems in my life. But God said, come on in. Just take one piece of pizza at a time. You believe me? Good, cool. We'll start there. We always want to start with the things that separate us. Bring them in. Bring them in. Don't worry about what they look like, how they let just, our goal, we can't even convert them. Our job is simply to introduce them to the king. Let Jesus do what he always does. Turn this long-haired hippie freak into a missionary. And I'm so thankful. I wouldn't trade this trip for anything, this journey. You young people, man, don't buy on to the American dream. It's a scam. You know what the American dream is? Get an education. Go to college. Get a job. Get married. Buy a house. Save up money. Retire and die. What a lousy dream. I wouldn't say that anything for the people that I've met, for Christian that I met who, who did the self-deliverance stuff or, or, or Chelsea who now is coming to Jesus or, or, or the, the girl that just came, you know, or, or, uh, or Steve, Steve, a businessman who has now given his life as a, uh, he's selling his business so that he can pastor. He's selling everything so that he can follow Jesus and, 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 and just lead people to Jesus. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade this, the, my, my, our, our, the difficulties that we went through, I wouldn't trade them for anything. You know? So he wants to bring him into the family. Then, you know, we look at the woman. Now, I don't know if you know this, but in some commentaries when you read, what you'll find is that the, this lost coin could have possibly been from the woman's crown. See, back then, they didn't wear a ring on their finger for a wedding, for marriage. They wore a crown. And in the crown, it had jewels. It had, it had coins. And they used to wear it when they would go through the marketplace, you know. And, and, and so, like, it's impossible that, that that's one of the coins that was lost. And that's why she was so diligently uh, uh, going after them. Because the coin was of great value. 
are those that don't know Jesus of great value to you. Enough that you'll keep sweeping the house. You'll keep looking. Because when she found them, when she found the coin, she rejoiced and she put the coin back into the place of prominence. When we come to Jesus, when people come to Jesus, they go from what? The lowest of low to where? Seated with Christ in heavenly places. There's no like step-by-step thing. Uh, Wrong answer. There's nowhere in scripture. You go from here to here when you come to Jesus. It says that he takes us. He takes those that are seated with him in heavenly places and he holds them up to all the principalities and powers and darkness. Look what I did with this man, with this woman. So when they come in, when, when, when people start coming to Jesus, do you have this step-by-step process that allows, you know, that makes them like they have to earn their way to the top? Or do you already understand that they are already a king and a queen and a priest of our hope, most high God? How do you view those people who don't know Jesus? How do you view those people that are just coming to Jesus? And then finally, you got the, you got the father. I've already kind of talked a lot about him. Immediately, robe and ring. Immediately, fattened calf starts getting cooked up. He doesn't care about what happened. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. This is how the Father views the lost. The question is, is are we like the Father or we like the Pharisees. To be honest with you, we are the closest people who could be Pharisees. We are. We're the closest to it. We know, you know, just so you know, when you read the Bible, you're not always the hero in the story. Sometimes we act like Pharisees. We've got to stop it. We've got to get our heart right in viewing the lost. Finally, I love every parable, what happens at the end of every one of the parables. Well, before I go there, I want to say one more thing about the lost son. It's really interesting. Now, this could be you, so I really want to encourage you. I love the parable because it doesn't have an ending. It just says, come on in, let's go celebrate, right? The son, the older son could still be standing outside. We don't know if he ever went in. But also the son who was lost, who came in. It's very possible that they went into the party and the son who was lost was sitting. Everybody's dancing. The father is celebrating and he's sitting there. I don't deserve to celebrate. Look, I know what I did. I know what I did. And I want to encourage you that if you have shame, from something you have done in the past. God has forgiven it. You can let it go. You can let it go. And you can stand up. And you can begin to dance with God. I'm telling you, you want to get, you want to get set free. That's a hint for the worship team. Get up there. You want to celebrate. You start dancing with God. You start celebrating with God. You start rejoicing. And every time you feel that shame, you cut it down. You say, no shame in this house. It doesn't belong here because my father has healed me. My father has delivered me. My father has forgiven me. Some of you are walking around in silent shame because you're like, I remember what I did. The father says he takes that and he throws it into the sea of forgetfulness. Rejoice with God. Because in every one of these parables, they rejoice. They rejoice when souls are being saved. You want to have, I love love the spirit here. I felt felt God really well when we were worshiping. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed him. Let's say it that way. You want to see passion rise in this church? Start leading people to Jesus. You know, look around. We got empty spaces. God never gives you anything that you don't need. You have these places because God knows you need them. 
How many came to church in a car today? Raise your hand if you came to church in a car. How many came with an empty back seat? You need that seat. God's given you that seat because you need it. Fill it with someone. Say, I'll pay for your lunch afterwards. They'll come. How much does that cost? How much would you pay for a soul to be saved? That's the most important thing. You're going to be fine. You're going to live forever. But there are those who are going to live forever without him. That's the purpose. That's not the purpose of Missions Month. That's not the purpose of the pastor. That's not the purpose of the worship team. That's our call. That's our call. That's your call. Your pastor will never meet half the people that you know. Why do you think God has placed you there? Why do you think he's put you next to someone in your workplace? Because he's called you. And God and Jesus is up there interceding for that worker next to you. He's interceding for you. He's not praying for your salvation. He's praying you'll wake up. It's not loving that person. So much so that you'll, you're not afraid to get dirty. You're not afraid to sell everything because you want to see the treasure come to life. Well, like Forrest Gump says, that's all I have to say about that. Would you pray with me? Would you be willing to pray with me? You know what? I think we're going to open the altars. Is that okay if we open the altars up? Okay. So we're going to open the altars up when they sing. Uh, if you feel like you have someone on your heart that God is placing on your heart, that you know that God wants to lead them, God wants to save them. If you get that compassion like the Father has, that you just want to run after them and you, you want to give your life for them, I want you to come down. And I want you to stop praying for them. Maybe you're like the 99 that's just been hanging out, enjoying green pastures, and you realize you got to start searching for the lost. And you want to repent. Yes, that word repent. It means to change your thinking. Say, you know what? I gotta start, I gotta start going after them. I gotta start lighting the lamp. I gotta start sweeping the floor because there's so many valuable coins all around me. If that's you, I want you to just come down, spend some time with God. Change your thinking. Maybe you're called. Maybe you're called. Maybe you're like 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 me and my wife, who's God's calling you to another land. And you're afraid. <laughs> We're not a people of fear. We're people of faith. Say, I'm going to give my life for God. I'm going to give it all. I'm going to give it all. Let me tell you, it's worth it. I, I'll be the first one to tell you it's worth it. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Maybe you want to say, and by the way, Moses was 80 years old when he got called. So if you're over 80, okay, I'll give you, I'll cut you some slack. Maybe God's not going to call you. But if you're under 80, God can still call you. You know, we had this friend, Gloria. She was in, uh, when we first came, when we first started a church in Rhode Island, she, I, we led her to Jesus. She came to Jesus and she used to like come to me and say, Pastor, God's called me to pray all night at the church. Can I, can, and I have to give it, I have to come and open the, the church for her. She'd pray all night. After a while, I was like, yeah, Gloria, just take a key. When you want, when God's calling you to go pray all night, you just go in there. I don't, I'm tired of you. You just go. One day she comes into my office. She says, Pastor, what do I do? I'm like, what? She goes, she, now this is, she was 67 at the time. She said, she goes, I just, when I was praying last night in the church, God said, go to the Philippines. What do I do? And being a very wise pastor, I simply said, go to the Philippines. I don't know how many trips she made over there, prayer walking and working with the churches over there. And she started saying, seven, 67 years old, but it wasn't going to stop her from the call. But God could be calling you right to your next door neighbor. God is calling all of us to have the heart of the Father to restore. So as we pray, these guys lead. I'm going to let them close afterwards. But if you want to spend some time at the altars, we're going to open the altars up.
Lord Jesus, make me an instrument. Lord, make me the tool in your toolbox that you reach for when you need, Lord God, to save a soul. Forgive me, Lord God, for my eyes of condemnation, my eyes of, of, of judging others, Lord God. Forgive me for that, Lord God. Mold me, change me, Lord God. Give me the heart of the Father. As we sing, if you want to spend some time at the altar, you can. If you need to go watch the Patriots lose, you can do that too. God bless you. Thank you for giving me some time to share.